He said, he said in his delivery. Hey, when I said, hey, they died, wasn't he moaning? Yeah. Yeah, this thing's right. No, you will. I just turned it on. No, he ain't died. Wasn't on a while ago. All right, time to get started tonight. Good to see everybody in church. Let's all stand together. We'll sing a couple songs here. Come right out here, Dan. Here's a good one to start out with. It's called He's Got the Whole World in His Hands. Everybody believes in that. Let's say amen and amen. Amen, amen and amen. amen. He's got the whole world in his hands. 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 He got the little in the rain.
actually silos. And her husband made silos in the prayers for the federal and DC Okay. So we'll keep them in our prayers, sure we will. Who else has one, Janice? Well, I've got several. <laughs> okay. First of all, thank you for the prayers for my foot. It is getting better. It's still swollen a little bit, but I'm not on a walker and not on a cane, so I'm, it, it is getting better. Good. I did have the ultrasound on my thyroid on Monday. They found a couple of, actually, a couple of uh, nodules. One on the left side, which Dr. Knapp didn't even mention, it's kind of spongy and they're not really worried about it. The one on the right is solid and suspicious, about two centimeters. So they're going to do a needle biopsy on May 29th on there. Um, God's got it. It'll be fine. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then just mer uh, traveling mercies and patience for my so my granddaughter Savannah's eighth grade from the downtown school in Winston Salem. They are in DC today on a field trip, and they'll be home sometime this weekend. So give them traveling mercies, but also give those teachers and, and uh, <coughs> give them patience of the volunteers, and, the, and I'll give them patience. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> That's a big trip. From it all is. It's it, eighth grade, so yeah. Eighth grade. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. We'll keep that one in prayer. Who else has one tonight? Charlotte? I got a praise report on my first cousin that was in, that's in the hospital. Okay. He is doing great today. Great. He went through that stress test today. And when he called, they was doing some, when I talked to him yesterday, he really sounded bad at Darwin and coughing and clean and stuff. And they told him they had to work with him last night <coughs> getting this fluid off of his stomach and get everything out before he take the test. Right. But when he called me today, he said, Charlotte, he says, I went through the stress test. And I said, well, look, you're not coughing and doing all that stuff you was doing. He said, no, they've got rid of that too. And he sounded great. Man, that's wonderful. Yeah. I couldn't go up there because he was doing some tests this evening. Right. So I'm going to wait till tomorrow. He said he will probably go home tomorrow. Oh, that's wonderful. So he is doing good. He sounded so much better. Mm -hmm. so praise that's God, right. he's doing all right. And I thank all of y'all for your prayers. I'm glad and to And for my sister, too. She went to meet my other sister and her daughter in law at Hamridge yesterday. She drove up there. Mm -hmm. She got out there and worked in her yard a little bit. She went to Walmart by herself today. So she's really taking responsibility on her own and know now she's got to do it because Robert's not there to do it for her. Right. right. She is really doing great and thank y'all for that one too. Yeah. She's that's doing wonderful. good too. So that's two praises right there. Two praises. Amen. Amen. And Bobby said pray for him because he worked the day and didn't get off till five thirty and he was drained. I bet he so was. So he didn't make it tonight. That's a pretty warm day out there today. Yes, it was. Oh, so they was pressure washing. So. Pressure washing, yeah. Well, we'll definitely keep him in prayers too. Uh, anybody else have a special request? Uh, feel free to share it. Uh, Jackie, how's Bobby doing now? He's Bobby's Okay. Feel about the same? Yeah. All right. Autumn said her mother's still on schedule to go back uh, when June? June the 10th. June the 10th, going back to Israel. <coughs> so we pray that God gives us traveling mercies over there, traveling mercies when she comes back. And he puts his armor and protection around her while she's there. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so she'll be flying a big flight. How long does it take to fly over there? Uh, about, I'd say nine to ten hours. Nine to ten hours? Yeah. Okay. All right. Anybody else want to mention one tonight? Anybody else? Charles, you got anything you want to mention? Uh, just getting Linda's worn out. She had physical therapy today and then hit, hit foot or down. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's getting tough now, but she's doing so much better. Just remember her tonight. And uh, Mother's doing much better with her healing of her wounds. Um, Lord willing, we're going to 
going to see her next weekend for Mother's Day, so we'll maybe we'll be able to spend some time here. Hey. All right. Okay. Linda, you want to share something tonight? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, Diane Ray texted me this morning. She was off to see the doctor about her face and her nose, the cancer doctor. And I got a, a, a text from her later that everything looked good. They didn't see any signs of cancer. And she was praising the Lord and wanted to thank everybody for prayers. Raven Sizemore was in her bed this week. Um, somebody hit her head on. Sure. That's what happened to her older sister that they lost. Yeah. Um, she wasn't hurt real, real bad, but it, it messed up her car, and the seat belt pulled her around the pelvic area. So she's real sore yeah. and a head headache there. Mm. Um, and pray for all of the folks that, that where the storm went through near them and messed up all of that, especially that little town of Sulphur. Yeah. Pray for the Gaines family and the Sizemore family. Pray for uh, medical needs for them and unspoken. And pray for all of them and her man. And <laughs> still needs, it, it, it still needs work, but it got us here, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good sign. Yeah. Yes. It's put putting along. Put putting along. <laughs> and keep her safe, and so they'll keep putting along. Yeah. And uh, unspoken repair is special. <laughs> spoken repairs. Unspoken repairs. Good unspoken repairs. 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 And these others we've just talked about here. And of course, always pray for the laws. Yes. Pray for the sick and the shut in. Yes. Pray for our country, our leaders, and police um, officers. Yes. First responders, yes, and all of them, dear Lord, and pray for all that we've been praying for so long. And thank you, Lord, for answer prayers for so many folks that we've been praying for so long. Amen. And thank you, Lord, for love you. Appreciate it. Thank you for our salvation. Amen. Thank you, Linda. All right. How about unspoken? Unspoken. Charlotte, do you have another? Yeah, let's pray for all those cops and everything that got killed in yeah. Charlotte. Yeah. For the Linda families because they really yes. needed it. That was four of them, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Four of them. That's terrible. Four we killed. Six. Four we killed. Yeah. yeah. I noticed they're starting to haul off a lot of the protesters now. Yeah. Uh, 200 AB last night, I believe, in Columbia uh, College up there in New York. And uh, so they need to get them out. Yes. Because they're just destroying the flow of the school. And, yeah, and, you know, even the Jewish kids are under a lot of attacks by them. Yes. <coughs> For Jewish, they get scolded or they get bruised or they get jumped on. So uh, we just really need to pray for our country because the Bible said that the Lord bless those that bless Israel and curse those that curse Israel. Amen. So they are still the apple of his eye. This was on the news yesterday that the, one, the protest at UNC, yeah. that they took down the American flag and put up the Palestinian flag. Oh, did they really? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then Dean they, just come out and said that that will not happen anymore, but we'll see. Yeah, well, they took it, to, you know, they went put the American flag back up, and they are now putting up fencing around the flag. Mm -hmm. Good oh, news. Yeah. You've come a long way the wrong way. <laughs> yeah. Amen, yeah. Brother Charles. We need to pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Pray for our country. Yes. Pray for our leaders. Right. Pray for our churches. God will use churches to reach these people. That's what they need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They don't have a purpose, and they just float from cause to cause to cause, and okay. nothing fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're not in the will of God, you're wasting your time. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. so we know that His will is always the best. Well, a lot of us, they are not college students. They brought in these professional folks. That yeah. That's true. Yeah. 
out the sticks. Yeah. yeah. And they get paid for doing that. Yeah. Yeah. They get paid more if they get arrested. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. Okay, well, let's go to the Lord then and remember these uh, different ones. Let's see here. Randy, won't you lead us back there in the back? Lord God, God, thank you, Father, for another opportunity to be in your house of worship. Amen. Now, I pray, Lord God, that you might be with these that have spoken out tonight. Be with those, Lord, that are ailing and sick. Be with those that are hurt that are close to us, Father. I pray that you just might encourage and strengthen them, Lord. Help them come back, Lord, because we need to fill this house, Lord. Amen. Lord, the word of Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord, that you just use pastor tonight to bring the message. Yes. And encouragement and strength. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Okay, the only announcements we have are the baptismal service coming up. We'll get with our people this, hopefully this Sunday, find out when would be the best time to do it. And, uh, for those of you that have never seen a baptismal here, we move this out of the way, and there's one right behind me, and uh, you just pull the top up, and if you preach to me, <laughs> the reason I usually try to stay right on time. But anyway, just kidding. So it's, it's, it's in Charles coming down here, so he don't <laughs> <laughs> In my family history, anybody that got up on stage with the trap door on didn't end up with <laughs> You know, Brother Harold Noble told me the reason he gets down here on the floor is uh, Preacher Aiken, who was about 110 years old, I believe, uh, when he passed away. But he was over 100 years old when he told Brother Noble his daddy knew him real well. And uh, he said, you're going to die behind the pulpit. And I said, you got to be kidding. He told you that? He said, yeah. Said he wasn't right about everything, but he was right about enough that I stay out in front. Of <laughs> That's what he said. Yeah. Well, he gets beat, Brother Paul. Yeah. Good up there playing and everything. He'll get up there and play that whole one if he jumped around. He stayed right on top of that door. I know. He's standing right on there. Yeah. Say, Lord, hold it up. Yeah. 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 Wow, yeah, that's all it is. She flies with it. Well, men, if y'all want to come to the front, go ahead and take the offering up here. All right. Donna, why don't you lead us to serve? Lord, we thank you for this time to come together. Lord, we thank you for all these prayer requests. Yes. Lord, just pray that you will be done. Be God ready, Lord. Amen. Maybe be a good story for this money, or for this collection that we're about to take up. Yes. Paul, you do, we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Went a little bit street there, but we're about to do this party.
I'll, I'll do it. All right, I'm going to say. Yes, Leah's going to help me. All right. Mm-hmm. She's making fun of me. Uh-huh. Leah, I got to say that. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, see. <laughs> I said the van, the van was put putting, put putting along, and the ceiling never said put putting along. You sound like a country hick. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean put putting along? <laughs> that she ever done a solo? No, no, she's never done a solo. Yeah, I just Jimmy Feinberg. No. Solo. Okay, I'm not here. <laughs> <laughs> solo. Yeah. Oh, here you go. Uh, okay. You take care of my mouth talk until you get it ready. <laughs> I have, Leah, Leah is 11, and we um, we started com- coming to Grace right after she was born. Yeah, yeah. yeah right after she was born. Yeah. And she was born in December, and, uh, and we started coming soon after that. And um, spent a lot of time in the nursery back there. <laughs> a lot of time. I have a lot of videos that I have taken of the kids back there playing, fighting, <laughs> um, being kids. <laughs> but um, yeah. I have videos of them singing, and and um, and, and I have some videos of you know on the videos <clears throat> you can hear the singing, you can hear the speaker in there. And, you know, you can hear Troy leading the singing, and I've got videos of them leading the singing while he's leading the singing. <laughs> um, but anyway, one of the songs that they have sung back there in the nursery since they were little, they would stand up, tell me the video, and say, is this song that we're, we're going to sing together, right? <laughs> um, it's just a simple chorus, and you all probably know it. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. Are you sure?
Randy, if you'll put that up, we'll get started here with the life of Christ. We're getting close to the end of the study. We have been summarizing all different aspects of the life of Christ, going from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, different books. And uh, what are some events that really stand out in your mind about the Lord that you love to study about? Anybody have one that's really walking on the water? Walking on the water. Yeah. One of the best. Yeah, when I was just a little kid, I just imagined that. Yeah. I never did. <laughs> no. No. I never did. I almost learned how one time when I found a snake in the water. I'll tell you what. Can you learn how to run? Learn how to run, yeah. Anybody else have one that you enjoy? The life of Christ. The pool of Bethesda. When he goes down to the pool of Bethesda. Yeah, that's awful. Yeah. That's an awful nice story about the Lord helping those that can't help themselves. And the man couldn't get into the pool in time, and so Jesus touched him, healed the man. <gasps> who else has one? How about probably the most popular is the raising of Lazarus. Yeah. And that's the one that really got him in the most trouble, too, because after that, he really picked up a lot of the crowd. And the uh, Pharisees and Sadducees and the Herodians they wanted to get him. They wanted to kill him because they were so jealous of him and he had the masses following him instead of the religious rulers of the day. But as we look at the uh, slide today, Mary visits Elizabeth and sings a song of praise. My soul magnifies the Lord. Is that, is that on 105, Randy? Nope, I'm working on it. Okay, I didn't think that was going to What about the one... Uh, he was writing in the sand because that was accusing that woman. Yeah, now that's another. I'd love to know what he was actually writing. He might have been telling what all he knew on them. That's what I've always <laughs> wondered about. He might have been putting their sins down yeah. and uh, putting their names down, what they had been involved with themselves, because yeah. they all left and they all yeah. went away one by one. Went home and tell her wife. No matter what he says, it's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, Don. No, I think that's good thing. Yeah, he put it in the ground, so it had to be something. Because from the eldest to the youngest, they all left. So it had to be something like that. Anything? Anyone else has one of the? Oh, well, when he turned over the money, the tables, the money changers. Yeah. Run out of the temple. I like that one too. Yeah. He really let them have it, didn't he? Yeah, he, did. he turned them, turned them every way but loose. <laughs> Knocked over the tables, turned the money out through the floor, and boy, I'll tell you, it was something else. Did he rise to heaven? Yeah, that he did. That's what we hadn't got there yet, but he did ascend up to heaven. Yeah. Now we're getting up there pretty close there, I think. I think one of my favorites is little widow lady of Maine. Her son had died. Yeah. And they already wrapped him up and they were on the way to the graveyard when Jesus showed up. Right. So even when you think it's over, yeah. Yeah. it ain't over. It's not over when you have the Lord, is it? With God, all things are possible. Amen. Thank you, Randy. All right. Jesus teaches about the coming of the kingdom in the last days. If you have your Bible, you can look with us over in Luke chapter 17. The kingdom of God is in your midst. He was the kingdom of God come to tell the people about God's kingdom. So we're in Luke chapter number 17 and verse number 20. Luke 17, verse number 20. And we're going to go down to verse number 37. When he, when he was demanded of the Pharisees and the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation uh, visibly. 
He's talking here about neither shall they say, Lo, here or there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. In other words, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And do you know in the Old Testament, they didn't have the Holy Spirit like we have in the New Testament. He would come on certain individuals and he would leave. And uh, Saul was one that the Holy Spirit left. And David prayed that he wouldn't lose the Holy Spirit when he committed adultery with what was her name? Bathsheba. So thank God in the New Testament we have been sealed with the Holy Spirit and we don't have to worry about that. So when we think about the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God is within you in verse number 22 and he said unto the disciples the days will come when ye shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and ye shall not see it. Now what's he telling there? He's getting ready to go back to heaven. And the day's going to come when you're going to miss it. You notice a lot of presidents will have signs out, Do you miss me yet? <laughs> and uh, that's kind of what Jesus is saying. You're going to miss him when he's not here. But thank God he gives us the Holy Spirit of God to stay within us. They shall say to you, see here or see there, go not after them nor follow them. For as the lightning that lighteneth out of the one part under heaven shineth into the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. So did he actually tell them that he was going to suffer and be crucified or did it catch him off guard? No, it didn't catch him off guard. He told them time and time again. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. How many years did Noah preach before the flood finally came? How many? 120. 120. He's known as the ark man. I imagine the boys coming home from school said, Dad, you just get, they get all over me calling me the son of the ark man. <laughs> He said, well, I've got to build the ark. That's what the Lord wants me to do. Likewise, let's look at verse 28. Also it was in the days of Lot. They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Who were the only ones that made it out alive? Lot and his daughters. Lot and his daughters. His wife made it out for a little bit, but she turned back. She looked back and turned into salt. Turned into 110 pounds of mortar salt. <laughs> Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. He's going to come back. It's going to be a great day. It's like the fire and brimstone falling from heaven. And then in verse number 31, that day... He shall, he which shall be upon the housetops, and then his stuff on the house, let him not go, to come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. Remember Lot's wife. I heard about a little boy, he was telling his Sunday school teacher when she was teaching on Lot's wife, and she turned around and became a, um, a, a block of salt he said well that's nothing he said my mom she was driving the other day she turned around made, and hit right into a telephone pole <laughs> <laughs> made a U-turn right in the middle of the road <laughs> even so shall it be in, the son of, in, in that day when the son of man is revealed let's go down to verse number 33 whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it and whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. I tell you that in the night there shall be two men in one bed, and one shall be taken, and the other shall be left. 
Two women shall be grinding together, the one will be taken and the other left. Two men shall be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. And they answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? And he said unto them, Whithersoever the body is, there will the eagles be gathered together. The vultures will come down. When Jesus destroys the Antichrist and all of his followers, then the vultures come down and eat the carcasses. They're called God's cleanup crew. And I think you see it in Revelation chapter number 20. But this is teaching us about the coming of the kingdom in the last days. It's going to be like the days of Noah. It's going to be like the days of Lot. It's going to be one of those days like when the Lord comes back, one's going to be taken, one's going to be left behind. We won't have time to go get right then. We need to be right before he comes. Right. Yes, Tom. You might ask me, but I, growing up, I was always told, you know, just... As long as you don't take the mark of the beast, you still got a chance. But lately, thank you, Charles, for preaching. I think I've heard you say, as long as you got breath in you, you got a chance. But after that, you know, if you die, I'm yeah. saying your chances are over. Yeah. And now, I'm talking about rapture. If, right. if you're left behind. When you're left behind the rapture. And if you don't take the mark of the beast, they're not going to let you trade you. you got money, you're going to die. The Antichrist is going to hunt you down. But you don't have a chance then either. Well, there is a passage that talks about the uh, Antichrist and that he will send some strong delusion. And if they will not get saved in the days of grace, which we're in now, then during that day they'll be deceived. Yeah, they'll be deceived. Probably unlikely that they will get saved. Right. If they won't get saved under grace, they probably are not going to get saved under judgment. Right. And what's the amazing thing? The Bible said that he gave them a chance after he does all these judgments on them and they curse him. They don't repent. It shows you the wickedness of the human heart. He's trying his best to bring them to salvation and they curse him. Hold their fist up at him, the Bible says. And that just makes matters worse. So, kingdom of heavens going to be here one day the Lord is coming back. When he comes back, we won't miss his place to be, will we? We'll be in the presence of the Lord at the marriage supper of the Lamb, and you'll see your loved ones. Thank God you want to see Jesus Christ. Amen. Now here's an event. Jesus tells the parable of the persistent widow. Here's the idea here. Pray and don't ever give up on your prayer life. Have you ever had somebody you really were burdened about and yet you just kind of gave up on them? And then later on they get saved. And you think, oh me, a week of faith. I should have had more faith than I had. I gave up on that person, but God never gave up on them. So what's he saying in verse number 1, chapter 18 here? He spake another parable unto them, to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint saying there was a in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. Help me against my enemy. And he would not for a while, but afterward he finally said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. <laughs> getting tired of her. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said, saith, And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry out day and night unto him, which he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. He will vindicate all at once, the children of God. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? He's going to find some faith, but there's going to be a lot of people with no faith. That's right. And they're going to be left behind. So one of the prayer promises is, keep on praying. Don't stop. Don't quit. 
Here's an event. Jesus tells the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector who went into the temple to pray. The key idea here is the humble are truly righteous. Now this is found in chapter 18 of Luke's Gospel, verse 9, down through verse number 14. He spake a parable to a certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and they despised them. You ever known anybody like that? Mm -hmm. Where they thought they were better than everybody else? Mm -hmm. And that if anybody's going to go to heaven, they will. They look down upon others. That's what this, that's what happened here. Two men went up to the temple to pray. The one was the Pharisee. The other was the publican. What is a pub publican? Tax collector. Were the Jews like tax collectors or not? <laughs> no more than we do, right? I heard a story one time about a man. He wrote the IRS. He said, here's $100 for taxes I didn't pay. If I still can't sleep, I'll send you the rest. <laughs> anyway, he spoke this parable. Two men goes to the temple, the Pharisee, the publican. The Pharisee stood, and boy, he thought he was Mr. Spiritual. He prayed thus with himself. Not with God, but with himself. He's bragging on himself to himself. God, I just thank thee that I am not like other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, and even this publican. I'm not like this old tax collector. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off, he would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven but he smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Now, what does he say about this? Verse number 14. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalts himself shall be abased or brought down, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. So who was justified? The tax collector. The word justified, does anybody know what that word means? Right. Just as if you'd never done it, never sinned. And that's what happens when we come to Christ and we're saved. We are justified. We are sanctified. What does that mean? Set apart. Set apart for a holy purpose. One day we will be glorified. What does that mean? You have a glorified body like Jesus. Justification, sanctification, Glorification are big words, but have simple meanings to them. So here's a man who was justified, the tax collector. Doesn't say that the Pharisee was ever justified. Jesus teaches about marriage, divorce, and the law. What God had joined together, let no man separate. Luke chapter 16, verse number 18. Since we're in Luke, let's just go back to Verse number 18, Whosoever putteth away his wife and marrieth another committeth adultery. Whoso marrieth her that is put away from her husband committeth adultery. So he's talking there about people who run around on their husband and wife and then they want to go from one to the next to the next to the next to the next. They're living in sin. Now thank God we can all be forgiven of our sins. And he can save us. But if a person is innocent, I think that God looks down upon that person and blesses them. Because there are some innocent people get caught up in a divorce that uh, didn't do anything wrong. They just had a spouse that was mean to them or, or dangerous to them or adultery uh, was committed. The event, Jesus teaches about the children. God's kingdom belongs to the children. I'm glad he uses children as an example because we can all keep that little heart of a child in our life if we want to. The children have faith in God. You watch little children. That's why he said if you offend one of these little ones, it would be better for you if a millstone were put around your neck and you were thrown in the sea than to offend 
one of these little children. But Luke chapter 18, verse 15. Notice what it says here in this passage. They brought unto him the infants, and he would touch them. But when his disciples saw it, they rebuked them, the parents. But Jesus called unto him and said, Suffer or allow the little children to come unto me and forbid them not. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. So we have to humble ourselves, just like the public. It's kind of the same idea. If a person's proud of their spiritual life and they think they're better and they're proud as a peacock, it's going to be hard for that person to get saved. They have to realize, Lord, I'm a needy person. I need your help. It's kind of like a lifeguard down at the beach. And you take some boys and they're playing out there and they're having a rough time and, and all of a sudden the lifeguard blows his whistle. They don't like that. You ever watch them when he says, come on in? And you can see them wagging their head and kind of dro drooping as they walk in a little bit shallow in the water. But you let one of them get caught in an undertow, they're going to want a lifeguard. And that's the way it is with salvation. If somebody can see that, hey, we're on our way to hell as the judgment of God, we'll want to be saved. But we can't do it ourselves. We have to have help. And it has to be outside help from Jesus Christ. Jesus tells a rich young ruler to give his wealth to the poor. For with God, all things are possible. Luke 18, verse 18 through 30. All right. A certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good, save or except one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And he said, All these have I kept from my youth up. And when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing, sell all that thou hast, and distribute it unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. Well, let's see what he's going to do here. When he heard this, he was very sorrowful. Because he was a very rich man. And when Jesus saw that, he was sorrowful. He said, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? For it is easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye. Jesus used humor. <laughs> Can you imagine trying to stick a camel through a, the eye of a needle? But it's an illustration. It says, For it's easier for the camel to go through the needle's eye than for the rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Now, could he be saved? Yes, he could be saved, but it's hard for him to get saved. Now, Jesus doesn't ask everybody to sell all that they have and give it to the poor. But there was one thing keeping this man from making his profession of faith in Christ and putting his faith and trust in the Lord. It was his money. He could not part with that money. And the Lord was trying to do him a favor and trying to tell him, I've got to be first. Man cannot serve God and money at the same time. Get in trouble every time. Yes. And so that's why he says there, he's upset, he's mad, he's sorrowful of heart. And they ask him, well, who then can be saved? And he said, the things which are impossible with men, hey, they're possible with God. Then Peter said, Lo, we have left all and followed thee. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house, parents, brethren, or wife, or children, for the kingdom of God's sake, who shall not receive manifold, many times, more in the present, and in the world to come, life everlasting. He says you're going to be blessed when you sacrifice with much more than you sacrifice. 
in this world, we always think, well, when I get to heaven, there's going to be a lot of blessings up there, but there's going to be some blessings down here too when you walk with the Lord. Day by day, week by week, month by month, year by year. Just walk with God. Here's an event. Jesus tells the parable of the vineyard workers. Key idea, the last will be first and the first will be last. Okay? For this one, we're in Matthew chapter number 20. So take a left. Go over a couple of books there to Matthew chapter 20. Verse number 1 down through verse number 16. The kingdom of heaven is likened to a man who was a householder who went out early in the morning to hire the laborers in his vineyard. That, they agree. I think we did this one last week. They agreed for a penny and then there's some that came along a little later and they thought they should the ones that agreed for a penny was paid their penny, but the ones that only worked an hour or two, they also got a penny. And so what did Jesus say? I gave you what you were supposed to get. I have a right to do what I want to do. If I promised you a penny, that's what you're going to get. And you know, it's kind of like getting saved. Sometimes we think, well, that person's so old and they've done so many wicked things, there's no way in the world they can ever get saved. Oh yes, just like you said, Don. If they've got breath and they're breathing and they trust in Jesus Christ, they go to the same heaven as somebody's been saved for 40 or 50 years. Now they may not get the same rewards, but they're going to go to the same heaven. And so anyway, we'll move on. Jesus predicts his death and his resurrection many times in the scriptures. Jesus heads toward Jerusalem knowing He's going to be killed there. The disciples, James and John, I think we went over this one, asked if they could have places of honor. And Jesus said, that is only reserved for whoever my father feels is worthy of it. (laughs) Jesus heals Bartimaeus and another blind man in Jericho. An old blind Bartimaeus, they told him to hush, to get quiet. But Jesus heard his cry. And Jesus went over there and healed him. Then we saw Zacchaeus, after climbing a tree to see Jesus, chief tax collector in Jericho welcomes Jesus into his home. And Jesus said, salvation is come to this home. Then we looked at Bethany, Mary, which is Martha's sister, anoints Jesus with expensive perfume. Jesus is anointed for the burial before he ever enters into Jerusalem. Can you imagine what it must have smelled like when he was on the cross? And all of that ointment had just been put on him. And it was still probably pretty strong. I imagine they got a whiff of it and said, he's got some pretty expensive perfume on him. Where did he get that? Well, he got it from Mary. Here's his last week. Jerusalem, Bethany, the Mount of Olives, the Temple Courts, the Upper Room, Garden of Gethsemane, Golgotha. He enters into Jerusalem riding on a donkey. The crowd cries, Hosanna to the son of David. He fulfills the prophecy of Zechariah 9, verse number 9. One minute he's a hero, the next minute he's what? Zero. Zero. That same crowd turned on him a week later and said, crucify him. On this Sunday they're saying, you know, Bless the Messiah. The kingdom of God is here. They threw out palm leaves, put their clothes down in front of him, uh, shirts and things that would smooth the way out. And they were all worshiping him. But when he didn't take care of Rome, they turned on him. And he wasn't here to take care of Rome. He was here to take care of our sin. Then he cleansed the temple for the second time. He said, you're making my house a den of robbers. He did it when he first started his ministry, and he did it at the very end of his ministry, which was three years later. Jesus again predicts his death. What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it's for this reason that I came. Father, glorify your name. John chapter number 12. You know, when he went to the Garden of Gethsemane, what did he say? 
Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. What do you think the cup was? Probably the sins of the people. I don't think he was scared of death because he knew he was coming back to life, but he had never experienced sin. But he was going to experience sin from everyone. Separation from his father. Right. And then he said, Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will what? Be done. done. The fig tree, it withered after he cursed it. That's a symbolic of the nation of Israel. The fig tree. And God has cursed the nation of Israel because he came unto his own and his own received him not. Now sure, there's some people to get saved. Thank God all his mother and other missionaries are over there trying their best to win people to Christ. And there are some that get saved. I led a young Jewish man to Christ one time. And he was hungry for the Lord. But then most of them looked down upon him. Most of them just believed in the Old Testament. And Jesus said, if you don't believe in me, you don't really believe in the God of the Old Testament. Because he and I are what? If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. So in the temple court, he teaches these parables. Pharisees try to challenge Jesus, but Jesus challenges them. Jesus defeats their attempts to trap him in his words. Now Jesus does this many, many times. They will ask him a question, and he will answer with a question. Have you ever done that with somebody? Somebody asks you a question, then you say, well, you tell me this and I'll answer your question. And they won't do it. (laughs) John the Baptist, was he of God or not? And then they knew if they said, yes, he was from God, he would ask them, why didn't you get baptized from him? And then if he would have said, no, he wasn't of God, the people would have really risen up against the Pharisees. Jesus is asked, which is the greatest commandment? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and body. Love your neighbor as what? Yourself. He teaches about hypocrisy, seven woes upon the Pharisees, the teachers of the law. I think we'll turn there and stop after we read that. Let's look at Matthew chapter 23. And pick that up in verse number one. Boy, he really lets them have it. He didn't pull any punches with this one. Listen to what he said. Then spake Jesus in verse one of chapter 23. Then spake Jesus to the multitude, to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. (laughs) There's a lot of people that don't practice what they preach. That's what he's saying. These Pharisees don't practice what they preach. They put heavy burdens, he says in verse 4, grievously to be born and lay them on the shoulders of the people. But they themselves will not move with them with even to do one small thing little act with the finger of theirs. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries. They enlarge the borders of their garments. In other words, they're all for show. They wear all these garments and they have all these little pins and things on them or little emblems. And they even had little scriptures. They roll them up and put them in those Phylacteries. It's kind of like a little compartment where you put scriptures in. They were telling everybody how holy they were. Jesus says, Be ye not like these people. They love the uppermost rooms and the feast. Verse number six. They want the chief seats in the synagogues. Now, they weren't the only one. Who else wanted the chief seat beside Jesus? James and John. And greetings in the market. They want people to worship them 
to greet them and call them rabbi, rabbi. But be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master. Who is that? Jesus Christ. Call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he shall humble himself, he shall be exalted. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites! You shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, and ye neither go in yourselves or allow others to go in with you. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! You devour widows' houses, and for a pretense you make long prayers. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites! For you can pass sea and land to make one proselyte a convert to Judaism. And when he is made, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Well, Jesus is really getting on. <laughs> Woe unto you, you blind guides, which say in verse 16, Whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold in the temple, he is a debtor. Ye fools and blind, for whether is it greater than the gold or the temple that sanctified the gold? And whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing. But whatsoever swears by the gift that is upon it, he is guilty. Ye fools are blind, for whether is greater the gift or the altar that sanctified the gift. Therefore shall Whoso therefore shall swear by the altar, sweareth by it, and by all things thereon. Whosoever shall swear by the temple, sweareth by it, and him that dwelleth therein. And he shall swear by heaven, sweareth by the throne of God. And him that sitteth thereon, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites. You pay tithe, you omit the weightier matters of the law, mercy, faith, you should have done these first, and you let the others undone. You blind guides, you strain at a gnat and swallow a cat. <laughs> I think we'll stop right there. Strain at a gnat and swallow a cat. Did Jesus have a sense of humor? Oh, yes. I would love to have been there when he said that. They probably didn't know what to think. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? All right. Well, let's have our invitation then. Charles, if you want to come to the front and place for us. Father, we thank you for the day you give us. Bless each one here tonight. Lord, I pray that you would just, in this invitation, do a work in our heart. Father, we just ask you to just touch each person. Help us to seek your will for our lives because we know it's the best life we could ever live. While our heads are bowed and eyes are closed, may you just say, Preacher, pray for me. I've got a burden on my heart, and the Lord knows all about it. I'd be glad to pray for you. Anyone like that, you'd slip a hand up all around the room. Father, you've seen our hands, you know our hearts. And we pray that God, you'll get the glory. And we're going to trust that God, you're going to do all things well. And you'll just show up, and the Lord, you'll do the great works that you can do. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's all stand to our feet, and heads are bowed, and eyes are closed. Hey, you want to come around the altar and pray as we finish up? You feel free to come. Maybe you want to come and just say, Lord, I've got a need. I've got a burden. Lord, I need some help. I need some strength. Lord, I need your wisdom. Trust and obey.
let's be dismissed in prayer at this time. I'll ask Brother Jerry. Jerry, would you dismiss us? Father, thank you for this another opportunity to be in your house. Lord, let us take this message and put it in our hearts and our minds, Lord. Let us study these parables, Lord, in places where we know we need them in our hearts, Lord, and in our lives, and so we can talk to other people about Jesus, Lord. Yes. Lord, thank you so much for the opportunity to be here tonight. Look after everyone that's paying. Give them all the traveling mercies that's been here tonight. Lord, and we just give you all the praise, honor, and glory for everything. For it's in your name I ask. Amen. 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 That's a good sign, buddy. Yes.